arms reach out to me cause they know I'm so lonely then my mind goes back to you Alexander McBain was born in Scotland in 1868, emigrated to Wellington in 1882. Uh, he obtained work as a teacher at the Te Aro Infant School in 1886, before being appointed headmaster at Te Aro School in 1895. Uh, Alexander McBain became a referee and a member of the Horifunua Rugby Football Union's Management Committee from 1902 for 12 years. 1906 he was elected president of the Horifunua Rugby Football Union a position he held until 1914. Um, McBain became a member of the Lower Hutt Borough Council in 1921, as well as serving as Vice President of Wellington Rugby Football Union and President of the Hutt Football Club, for which later he was made a life member. Uh, the McBain Memorial Shield was first played for in 1934 and was donated by Hector McBain, who is Alexander's son, and Thomas Bevan from Monaco. Uh, the first ever fixture um, contesting the McBain Shield was between Hutt and Petoni back in 1934 and Hutt won this 6-5. to five. Uh, Since 1934 uh, the McBain Shield has been contested for 86 times, Hutt have won 20 times, Petoni have won 61 times. There have been five draws and that 61st victory was this year 2022. Uh, yes, yeah, so McBain Shield are uh, for anyone who is involved in the Petoni Rugby Football Club or the Huddle Boys Marriott Football Club um, is, uh, understands that it's more than just a regular weekend game or clash with any other club. I mean obviously there are trophies and cups contested for with, um, with most other clubs but the McBain Shield just seems to have um, just a wee bit more meaning um, and resonates a little bit more for us, definitely here at Petoni. Um, so it's definitely when the when the schedule is released by Wellington Rugby every year, it's definitely the the date that you go searching for in that calendar and make sure that you can circle that and ensure that you're definitely around. The rest of the club, if you're playing for any other team, if you're a supporter of the club, a volunteer, a life member, a supporter, a fan, um, it's definitely one that you want to make sure that you're in town for. It always has been the biggest trophy in club rugby for, for us. There's uh, two trophies I think we, we've we always enjoyed playing for. That's Tilliard against Paniki. And, uh, you know, in those days Paniki used to have, you know, supporters come and march down Jackson Street. And we used to have the, the McBain Shield, which was the big one. Uh, that was, you know, obviously across the borders. And I can remember uh, when Bob Scott first came to Petoni, you know, the, papers were full of it that he'd be playing over the, uh, you know, the, the McBain Shield and how, how it was all built around that. It's, uh, it's always been a huge trophy and, uh, uh, you know, always had the biggest crowds, you know, you, you couldn't get into the Hutt Wreck or Petoni Wreck uh, for people, you know, the grandstands would be packed and they'd be four or five deep round the ground. I don't think I ever coached the McBain Shield. Uh, I think uh, Hutt had, had a relegation and uh, <clears throat> had been relegated and they were playing down the grades. But even then, you know, the, the crowds, you know, the people would still turn up to the game and uh, you, you'd, you'd want to win it. My very first was watching as a kid, um, going down with Dad and watching in the rain, watching um, McBain, and then the first playing one was at Hutt Rec, and yeah, it wasn't a good experience. Every year the McBain crowds 
is just it's just a, it's just a special game, special crowd, special game, and it's just that rivalry uh, between the the two clubs over the bridge. Uh, the difference between a normal game and McBain is you don't sleep for the whole week leading up. You know, hatred's a horrible word. You know, I don't think it's hatred though, but I, I just think it's uh, you know you're playing against your closest mates probably. You know, guys you've gone to school with and. They've decided to go and play for those hut, that hut team. <laughs> you know, we've decided to play for Petonia. But basically, uh, you know, you're, you're playing against your, your closest rivals, probably guys who you, you play cricket with or softball with in the summer. You're playing against them in the winter, and uh, it just builds uh, builds up that uh, sort of well, tension and all that sort of thing. But they're, they're always the best after matches, aren't they? Yeah, so I came over to New Zealand. Um, yeah, with the intention of, of playing some some solid rugby, Petoni was uh, the first club that, that got back to me when, um, when I was uh, making my inquiry. So um, so made the commitment, and um, yeah, not looked back. It was it was pretty important that I found a, a similar vibe to the rugby club I had back home, and um, yeah, it's been it's been awesome in that sense. Um, you know, it's had its ups and downs. i um, kind of been on the fringe of the premiers for a couple of years, and and uh, and, and managed to make a, a, a fair few appearances, but. Um, yeah, uh, there's, there's been a good, great couple of last seasons, particularly with the uh, getting to the Jubilee Cup final. It's pretty memorable, so yeah. Yeah, so I've been in uh, three McBain's now. Um, I always tell people that uh, Premier Rugby is the, uh, the highest standard of rugby I've played at, but when you're playing in McBain, it goes to another level. So um, it was pretty exciting this year again, being involved. Yeah, we had had a few drinks. And, um, so we had a few boys around in my house bit of a champagne breakfast before the big game. Um, the weather wasn't the best, so we tucked into a few beverages. Uh, got some face paint on and uh, headed on down to the wreck. From there, we've walked past the Huddle Boys team warming up and uh, doing a bit of abuse. We're gonna try to throw them off their game. There may have been a slight confrontation. I don't remember the thing from there until I'm hugging my boy Tease. It was really interesting because um, we'd obviously played six rounds and lead, going into that game in round seven, Hutt was sitting first six from six and we were sitting second six from six and I think it was only a bonus point that separated the two teams so the McBain Shield game is, is massive any, any year no matter where you're sitting on the table but this year just seemed to have a wee bit more riding on it because not only were both teams unbeaten at the point, we were first and second and it was just one of those games where both teams were pretty much close to full strength. We, we were missing obviously a couple of rep players. Uh, we didn't have access to Peter and Riley, which is a real shame. Uh, they played, um, I think, most of the six games up until then, but representative um, commitments of the Hurricanes 20s, I think, uh, ruled them out for this game. So I guess straight away we were, we were definitely weakened uh, without those two. But, We'd built depth right through, and I remember that day because um, obviously there was so much riding on it, and uh, we, we ran out. I think we had a few knocks during the game as well. Uh, I know Mueller went down, I know Caleb went down, and then from memory, Mason Henry started on the wing and had to move into loose forward. Um, Hutt had the better of the first half. Hutt old boys Maris came out charging, they scored early under the sticks, and uh, causing a bit of stick and baiting our boys and all that sort of stuff but it was good to see that our boys really stuck at their, their game they weathered the storm um, and just held on and, and kept playing until the 80 plus minute it was pretty tough uh hut started pretty well um kind of shocked us uh we talked about being big in the first 20 minutes and getting physical and i think we got bullied a bit uh, we spoke about that at half time and just needed to hang in um in the close moments and uh, when opportunities came, uh, we really had to take them, so we managed to come back. We were down, obviously, 20 to 10 at halftime. Second half, uh, we scored again. I'm pretty sure Mason scored his second try, so we went to within five, 15 to 20. And then I think with about 15 minutes to play, we finally managed to get back into their half, and we knew that they were tiring. Um, and, and obviously, you, you rely on your bench, but we had to... We had to go to a bench early because of the, the injuries that we had. I remember there was a line out and Ryan Emery um, might have been his first game for the year because uh, obviously we had Zeke and Caleb playing hooker. I think Sal had a, a game or two. 
but uh, Ryan was pretty clutch with his throw. And then obviously from the rolling wall we scored. And I, I remember every try that was scored, whether it was Huddle Hut or us, there was always a wee bit of niggle. Like there was someone was pushing someone off the ball and that. And um, we scored from this sort of 15, 20 metres out. And again, this kind of melee ensued. And then Gucci, I remember, just came out of, just popped up and walked back and there was a big cheer because obviously not only had we tied the scores, but it was Gucci that had um, been responsible for that. 20 all, 15 minutes to play, we were just going back and forth. And then um, I, I always had faith in the boys because obviously we'd beaten Auries and I think round three with having come from behind. And all of the scores were tied, Hutt definitely um, managed to uh, win the territory and the possession battle. And obviously they were camped on our line and they were just throwing bodies at our balls and at our boys. Yona and Rona were doing uh, Rona were doing a massive job, um, and JR. But yeah, Yona was something else. He was just poleaxing guys, cutting them in half. Uh, so when I come on, oh, oh, there's maybe 25 minutes to go. Um, didn't do a huge amount uh, in the in the lead up to the final moments. Um, I think I made one or two tackles, um, but didn't actually touch the ball. Um, and yeah, it was obviously involved. Well, uh, out in the back line uh, for the for the final few minutes, watching some of those monstrous hits come in from Big Yons, um, uh, and yeah, just hoping that we could hold out. Had old boys had the opportunity to to kick the goal and they never took it, and then uh, you know that would have uh, put them in front. You know, just had to catch the ball, kick it out, sort of thing. Then yeah, it got pretty pretty intense, obviously. Um, we, we couldn't we couldn't pay for the draw because obviously um, we'd share the points, but Hutt would retain the McBain, so we, we we needed something, and then obviously that's when Toop stepped up. Uh, well, I saw uh, Brandon drop back for the for the drop goal, and thought that that was it really. Um, I saw Brandon Larson line up for the dropping on our home court, returning the record number one for the 2022 McBain Shield. He was looking pretty flat, going for the game one. And I took that personally. So, and, and I noticed he was pretty close to the to the rook, obviously. Um, and then Toops came charging forward and and and, uh, and did what he did. And we won't say whether or not that's the that's the miracle. Um, I thought it was a prop who did the charge down, but it was actually Tupo. Uh, the real miracle was Tupo playing 80 minutes. <laughs> and it was an interesting one because he did he he obviously reached out to charge down. It didn't come off the hands, but he dived. He came out so so hot that the ball came off under his arm. And then it obviously just sort of dribbled forward. Sammy Blackburn won the race to it. Um, but really, my intention was just to hack it away from the dry line. To be honest, I wasn't trying to um, trying to score. Um, then it got sort of rolling end over end, and uh, yeah, um, it, it popped up nicely, um, as rugby balls tend not to do. 20, 30 meters down, and, and we just yeah, room service bounce in his hands, and he scampered away, scored. Um, so Sammy t chasing it. Um, Next thing he's put it down and Tease comes running to us out of nowhere and uh, probably hugged him for a good five minutes. I saw Sam, my long lost cousin from England, score the try then and I decided to start popping off. Oh, it was it was unreal. <laughs> yeah, we actually had a corner with the Colts as well as the Ponies and oh, just the atmosphere, especially with Tubes just charged down and Sam Blackburn running. Oh, everyone was just out of their seats. Like the whole game's in actually. I think there were a few hot supporters in there that weren't but Apart from that, everyone else was up watching the sail run across the field and oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I almost, um, all the blood sort of, yeah, just kind of lost its way out of my head because I was just hugging anyone inside. I turned around and hugged a 85 year old life member and I almost um, hugged the life out of him. I think, I think Rampage got a decent hug and then I had to sit down because I was, I, otherwise I would have fainted. But um, it was pretty awesome seeing the scenes. Obviously, the crowd coming onto the, um, onto the bank, just rushing down from the scoreboard end, the playground. The grandstand was going absolutely wild. This year's game was just an absolute humdinger, absolute classic, the side of that, that final moment. And I got out the old phone and um, uh, in that final minute as Hutt were hot on attack and just thought, oh, I'll just film it just in case Batoni, you know, pulls something out of the fire. That final kick through went through and then scoring under the post and the crowd just went absolutely crazy and I turned around and uh, filmed a bit of the crowd and um, people just jumping up and down, falling off their seats, screaming and it was just absolutely amazing atmosphere.
I don't think, you know, in all my experiences uh, of, of the McVean Shield, I've ever seen or heard uh, a, a group of people watching a game uh, react to such a, you know, a, a great moment. Great for us, of course, but we were all up on our feet cheering and all the hut guys are all up on their feet, you know, <laughs> lambasting the, the full bugger that got his kick charged down. Yeah, so that was um, yeah, pretty cool and, um, you know, it's something that as, a, as an amateur rugby player uh, and outside back, it probably doesn't get much better than that um, uh, in terms of that adrenaline rush. Pretty thankful to uh, Toops and uh, Sammy B for uh, making it a special day. It's pretty close there and had about six, six or seven heart attacks. Uh, but yeah, got through in the end and super wrecked. It's always good to beat those buggers, eh? Yeah, it was just an amazing finish. It's probably the best finish of a game I've ever been involved in. What an amazing finish, just truly incredible. I think probably one of the best McBain finishes uh, we've ever seen. For Sammy Blackburn to tow, tow the ball and end up with it under the 60 on the other end uh, was a pretty special day and enjoyed by all around the ground. Uh, it was a huge effort, like Yono was big. Uh, um, Yono Paki, um, Khan. Jack Ross again, Dill, just all our forwards stood up and made some massive tackles in that last uh, kind of 10-15 minutes. But uh, yeah, no, they'll, be, they'll be coming for blood next year. But, you know, in the end, uh, we got the bounce of the ball, we scored the try and uh, you know, it was a, a magnificent victory and I, I think it, it laid the foundation for what happened for the rest of the year. Mm. Yeah, so my mum was, was in, the, in the crowd, uh, she was over visiting from the UK, so um, yeah, pretty, pretty unique that, that, that she was there for that. She um, apparently was jumping up and down in, in, the, in the crowd screaming, that's my son. So um, yeah, I think she made a few friends that day. Um, winning, the, winning the McBain is, is, is pretty awesome. Um, and you know, if you can get across the line in that battle, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to heat up in the changing rooms um, after the game and then definitely in the club rooms. And we, Obviously made our way back to the club rooms later on with the shield and toe and um, yeah, just another one for the for the memory bank and the history books. Uh, obviously awesome, the, the, the bar just took an absolute hammering. Uh, just awesome to yeah, kind of have a yarn with um, you know some of the ex players that have played in these you know these clashes over the last decade or two or three or four decades, and it means just as much to them um, now as it does to, to us. Pretty cool to see it all kind of unfold in front of you, but then obviously just three, four, five days after that, just watching replays and replays upon replays of it uh, was pretty awesome. So definitely one I'll never forget. Afterwards, it, it really sort of hit home uh, what had happened. Um, all the clips, uh, there was a couple from the far side and there was a couple of the younger um, sort of ball boys uh, running down the pitch with their arms in the air and, um, uh, you know, and, and, yeah, the brotherhood running down from the clock tower. And, yeah, you just see all those reactions, and so I don't know. I've, I watched that video a thousand times, and 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 you, and you see different people at different times. You watch it, and it's um, yeah, just shows what it means to everyone. And um, so yeah, to, to be involved in that is, is is obviously very special. I think my Instagram followers went up by I don't know at least 18, 19. So solid, solid count there. And then getting buzzed by Izzy Dag's radio show and stuff. It was pretty surreal. You know, people tend to say that the charge down was the real miracle. And you know what I have to say about that? They're absolutely correct. The charge down was the miracle. I'm the miracle. <laughs> yeah, and maybe it's a debate that can run for for the rest of time. Um, Toops have played the full game, um, so you've got to give him some credit for, for getting there, um, putting his body out there. Brandon was only a few metres away from the ruck, so you've put throw that into it into the mix and he's not got too much ground to cover but yeah look we're both old fellas getting on a bit um, uh, so for both of us to, to pull that out of the bag I mean those younger boys should be should be stepping up to the plate a little bit more now the real miracle was um, JR was actually allowed to get on the piss that night I guess the following week we had to take on Pornicky and they, they would have been rubbing their hands because you know for three four five days well after uh, the Saturday that we won the McBain um, we were still obviously celebrating pretty hard and that Sam Black, Blackburn, Blackmore trial was going pretty viral. I've just loved this season for what, what, what the, uh, what's happened you know, in the club. I think it's been building. It, uh, this year we've, 
we've had a magnificent year and you can see that with the success down the grades and with the Premier team playing so well and playing well for one another. Boy, we're only kicking the pants off winning the Jubilee Cup, weren't we? I, I thought I was hanging up my boots, to be honest, after the season just gone. Um, I'm not sure I've played my last game of rugby ever. Um, but... Where's the question mark? We won the uh, we won the trophy for the golf as well. Great weekend. Uh, you know, the Friday, the golf day, it just epitomises what our two clubs are about. Uh, that we foster the the rugby in our area. The the rugby clubs are important to the community. I mean, obviously there are trophies and cups contested for with um, with most other clubs, but the McBain Shield just seems to have um, just a wee bit more meaning. It's more than just a regular weekend game. Incredible and just sort of summarise for me what uh, McBain's all about. So here's to many more, it's just a fantastic competition, a wonderful rivalry and all played in good spirit of course as well and we have a beer at the end of the day. You know you used to sell out the grandstand and uh, you know people used to queue up for tickets but you know that's all that's all changed but you know if you're looking for a big crowd in a, in a club game today it's the McBain Shield. It's as, as big as it ever was uh, in the players eyes I think. Okay, so do you think you'll ever go back to uh, our You know what, f*** you, Hacker. This is bullshit, mate. <laughs>